I've been playing chess for a fair few years at this point, and for the majority of those years, I've really struggled against this particular variation in the Scandinavian defense. This arises after you take in the Scandi, obviously, and instead of playing queen takes, your opponent plays knight f6, which I think is more popular than queen takes. It's what I see mostly. So in today's video, I've got two games that I've played in online blitz over the past few days where I've faced this opening, and I'm going to give my recommendation for what to play against it. And that's bishop b5 check. Now, the computer, you know, if you just look at the computer, it will give you knight f3, d4 as the best moves. Bishop b5 isn't its favorite, but it's forcing, right? It's a forcing move. I actually have a video on my channel, which I think I released yesterday at the time of recording this video. Well, the time of releasing this video, where my opponent played knight bd7. And we had quite an interesting position arise. So after you've watched this, if you want to check that one out and see, you know, what how you should respond to knight d7, then please feel free. I'd really appreciate it. This isn't as good as bishop d7, though. It's also not as popular as bishop d7. Because bishop d7 forces white to make a choice, right? Knight d7, white can just leave the bishop on c4, sorry, on b5, and they're not forced to do anything. Whereas after bishop d7, you don't want to take, because if you take, then queen takes, and this pawn is falling. The whole point of this variation is that c4 is a bad move, because black can gambit the c6 pawn, and... After this sort of position, black has a massive clamp on the d4 square, and black is better, which is why in this position you don't play c4, because of the same thing. And black just has incredible control over d4, might push e4 at some point, it, it, it's a bad position, right? Simply not good. So... You instead play bishop c4, and you go, okay, I have forced you to put a bishop on d7, which means your queen is not attacking the pawn, so you can't take. If I'd have just gone bishop c4 straight away, you could still play knight takes, because the queen would be hitting d4 as well, d5 even. And actually, um, I first saw this line recommended by Daniel Naroditsky, which I'm sure you're all... I'm sure you're all aware of him. Great guy. Such a good chess player. And once I implemented this variation, basically knowing no theory, but he just said, you know, give it a try. And I've had great success with it. So the point is, we now defend the pawn. And my opponent plays bishop g4, which is the main move. And I go f3, which looks wrong, but it is the best move because... The problem is, if you go for a move like knight e2, black has time to take. f3, though, even though it's weakening, black has no time to take the pawn. So after the bishop moves, he goes to c8. I was expecting f5, but c8 it is. He was playing these moves very quickly, as you can see by the time usage, so he clearly knew what he was doing. And I go knight c3, just defending the pawn. And... It's difficult for black to add another attacker. He could go knight to d7, intending to come to b6. I believe... What's what's the move? Here, here, here. And if he takes, then you just castle, and you've got a lot of development. Black still needs three moves to castle, and you're doing all right. Doing all right. I mean... This, this line in general is quite equalizing for black, to be fair. Um, maybe after knight bd7, maybe d4 is better. But... Oh, this is interesting. And then bringing the bishop to d3. And then if something like this, then... Maybe c4. 
knight e2 castle and you've got a bit of an attack brewing i this looks nice to me so i would recommend this if your opponent plays knight bd7 here um, but from here i'm going to talk a bit less theoretically and we're just going to go into the games that arise from my theory and my opponent plays c6 gambiting the pawn controlling d5 d4 I develop my knight, we have e5, clamping down here, and I castle. And I fully expect bishop c5 check, king moves, castle, and I go d3. And my point is, okay, f3 is a weakness, but I have massive control over e4. So after knight to h5, which was weird, I, I don't really understand bringing the queen out maybe. Although... How do you have played, I don't know, something like bishop f5? I was planning bishop g5. That was my idea. Which kind of forces the bishop to drop back. Because if he doesn't, um, say he plays rook c8, then ideas of bringing the knight, well, probably here to stop bishop takes. But even this looks good. Um, I would have been very happy. That was my plan. So... Black would essentially be forced to drop his bishop back. And that's a minor victory. Instead he goes knight h5. So I go knight e4. Attacking the bishop. And he goes to b6. Which is apparently wrong. So I go bishop g5. Attacking the queen. f6 can't be played because of his pin. Which is important. He moves the queen. And I put a knight on g3. Which is wrong. It, <laughs> it's wrong. Apparently, I should move my queen to one of these squares. I assume this is just to add more pressure to this. And if, like, the king moves... Okay. Oh, and then you're looking at d5. Okay. Okay, no. that That's valid. That's valid. I didn't notice that. I just brought my knight here offering a trade. He went to f4 though. If he'd have taken me, then something like knight takes. And I think I'm probably quite happy. I think this is a nice position. It's easy to play. Um, f4 is going to happen at some point as well. Which is kind of the whole point of the setup. But he goes to f4 himself. I play a3, just giving my bishop a way back, because I don't want knight a5 to attack it. He's king h8, stepping off of this pin, and I take. Just because that knight was really annoying, and I was worried my bishop was going to get trapped. So I figured I was going to take it eventually anyway. But now I'm adding a lot of pressure. And after a5, I drop the bishop back. a4... And I go d4, which you kind of have to play because the pawn structure is a bit passive here. Whereas after d4, I can play moves like c3, c4, maybe d5, and grab some space. So my opponent plays rook a5, which was a really odd move. Like, uh, I assume he's trying to swing the rook over for a kingside attack. But I don't believe black has the firepower. So I just play queen d2 and go, look, I'm going to attack your pawn. He plays queen e7, which stops defending the pawn. And I decide to take, which gives up my d4 pawn. But I thought knight d5, this is a problematic fork because this bishop is also defending the knight. So I was expecting queen d8, keeping an eye on the bishop, which is defending the knight. And then after takes takes what on earth is the computer suggesting knight d6 and if he takes then the rook hangs huh and we want to go here and we want to go there okay that's really cool i did not notice that I 
I don't know. I don't know what I was going to play in this position, but it definitely wasn't knight d6. <laughs> it definitely wasn't that. Um, yeah, probably just bring a rook to d1, realistically, is what I would have played. But he goes queen e6, and I go knight g5, attacking the queen. The queen needs to keep an eye on the bishop, and the bishop needs to keep an eye on both of these pieces. So he goes to h6, I take, and I'm expecting queen takes, but then knight f7, I thought he had to give the rook up here, and I'm just an exchange up, right? Instead, he takes my knight of his rook, and I'm like, hang on, hang on, you just hung a knight. And he goes, okay, but rook h5, queen g1, important move defending h2 and keeping an eye on the knight and I'd love to take this bishop now because I'm a piece up he goes to e3 so I take and play knight takes a5 a4 sorry and I'm like I don't think you have enough firepower so he plays rook f4 which I kind of missed attacking the knight and threatening to go rook to h5 and just to illustrate if I try to save the knight, then here, 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 and I have two rooks and a knight, and I think two extra pawns? No, one extra pawn versus a queen, which is winning, but it's also not easy to win, you know? So instead I play rook ad1, threatening mate. He plays g5. I check, check. And I was very happy to see the king come up. I was very happy to see that. And I play g4, which is necessary. Because it attacks this rook. And it also stops this rook from swinging over. So there's none of those ideas of taking anymore. So he has to move his rook. And I drop the knight back. He plays queen f8. Because after knight e4 check, the king moves, and he's got three pieces staring at f3. But I'm like, okay, I'm quite happy to trade a pair of rooks for the cost of a pawn. Drop this rook back to stop rook to f1, right? Because that is a threat. He goes queen f4, attacking the knight. I go to g3. He takes. I go rook f1. We trade. And h5. And I have 7 seconds left here. So I go queen d3 check. The king moves. And I play queen e3. Which isn't great because it allows queen d1. I kind of panicked a bit. And he can take on c2. I think I was planning on playing this. And trying to get a queen trade. Which he probably has to do. Because otherwise I'm going to take this pawn. He could go to b3 to defend it, but then h5 falls. So that was my plan. And also, the queen doing this means that I target e6. So my opponent actually ran out of time after, after queen e3. He ran out of time. But it's completely winning. And that's the first game in this variation which... I just think it's quite useful because you go you go a pawn up early on and then you just kind of hang on to the pawn essentially black has some active pieces but it's not enough you know so and then black he, I mean he got himself tangled up which isn't really like it's not what's necessarily going to happen just because of the opening or anything but it's an interesting game nonetheless, especially since there's the pawn on f3. It's just a bit of a weird positional like weakness. So I'm going to, going to take you through game two really quickly. Um, this isn't quite as exciting, I don't think, but I think it's still quite useful. So if it decides to load, we have the same thing. Bishop b5 check, bishop d7. Bishop c4, and then we have bishop f5, right? And I can't defend this pawn again. So I go knight c3. We have... Well, no, I, I can defend the pawn again, but, like, I can't get enough defenders after this. And I go d3, 
Because if the knight takes my bishop, then I take back, and then I have a pawn defending it. And it doesn't matter if black tries to give up a pawn, because, like, I don't have a pawn stranded on d3. Instead, it's doubled, which is arguably better in this particular scenario. So, instead my opponent takes, we trade a pair of knights, and I castle, and we've got easy development, you know? These these positions aren't always going to be winning. You're not always going to keep your pawn. They're very... Whoa, jeez. They're very easy to play. Um, these aren't all the best moves or anything, but just line up on the F file, your bishop's out, your knight's out, get the bishop into the game. And here I do similar to what I did last game, going for d4. But here, because it's a bit more of a traditional structure, I chuck a knight on e4, e5 even. And after queen c7, I drop the bishop back. We trade, because my bishop's useless on this diagonal now. And then he goes f6, because otherwise my knight's going to sit there forever. And obviously he doesn't want to take with the bishop. Because a bishop's probably better than a knight. Especially because this is quite a nice diagonal to be on. So he goes f6. We trade. And this is just a weakness. So I go queen c4. Which looks like an odd move. But the idea is that e5. Which is actually what my opponent played. Means that this knight is pinned to the king. So after takes, takes, I play rook d5, threatening rook takes, and then queen takes queen. My opponent moves to queen to get out of the pin. I play rook d2. And my idea is, black is hasn't really got that many moves. But let's say he goes here. Then I can take on e5, because my rook defends f2. So he needs to try and defend e5, which isn't easy. He could go for e4, but then the pawn falls all the same. So if he plays a move like queen f6, which I was more expecting, then I'm just going to double up, and I'm still going to win this pawn. So my opponent plays knight b6, and after takes takes, I take the pawn. I go knight d7, forking everything and forcing a trade of knights. And then <clears throat> my opponent has to play rook f7, otherwise I'm going to win his queenside pawns. He could play rook b8, but if you don't know much about endgame positions and like how to position your pieces, this is not how you do it as black. That is a horrible, horrible rook. And my rook is, you know, forcing both of these pieces to remain passive, right? So he plays rook f7, which he has to do. And I'm just a clean pawn up. And this is very winning. Because <clears throat> he gets his king into the game. But he does it in a weird way. He tries to run after these pawns. But now I gain opposition on his king. And I can just sneak in this way, and there's not much he can do about it. So he tries to create counterplay on the queen side, but we trade, I keep pushing. And here I, I could go f6, but his king starts to get in and get behind the pawn. Let's just do like this or something for the sake of argument. His, his king can make it difficult. So instead, after king c5, I just re re retain the opposition. The king just cannot get in, and f6 is completely unstoppable. So he tries to go the long way round, and I could play f6, of course, but I just go king d6, and he's still cut off. And here, it's just game over. After this, my opponent resign. No, he doesn't actually. He plays on. I just promote. I have this important check. 
to win the pawn and here my opponent resigns all this to say that essentially this opening it's it's not always going to allow you to retain the pawn but it's going to give you a very easy position to play and this um, pawn structure where your opponent's got an e pawn and you've got a d pawn especially when you can create a position where you get d4 in just whacking a knight on e5 can be really really effective because as we see as as we saw here f6 was so weakening that that's not a valid way to kick the knight out in most cases and it's just a very easy position it's not it's not winning nothing like that but you know if your opponent isn't a complete idiot you're not supposed to get a completely winning position after like five moves or unless you set some weird trap which i have plenty of in other videos in my channel so you know shameless little plug but anyway this video's gone more than long enough I'll let you guys go get on with your lives. Uh, thank you for watching till the end and have a good one.